Hi, it's Blake here with Builder Kids and also Kobe's hat. He's hiding behind the camera. Tell him and, to stop. And my dad. Wait, no, wait, no, wait. Nope, there he is. <laughs> See, doing, that's an outtake. <laughs> and we're doing the um. And we're re, and we were redoing our basement. We made a few. We made a few other videos on it. And my dad rented this thing right here. I don't know the name. It's a floor sander. So what Blake was going to say is, we, we want to stain the floor, <clears throat> but it was painted. So I'll show you over here. I already started doing a lot of this. Um, this is what it looked like. Actually, worse than that, this section over here. Actually, here, I'll insert a picture right here so you can see what it looked like. So <clears throat> I searched for a lot of different things. We tried floor strippers we tried the like a simple orange it's supposed to be a uh, um, non-toxic or whatever or it doesn't put off fumes um, that didn't work tried hand scrapers which there, there's a scraper right here this one um, angle grinder the angle grinder with a flap disc would work but this would take forever and it would make a horrible horrible mess we tried the pneumatic scraper which you saw Blake in the one video doing that worked but that again would take absolutely slash forever air slash air chisel um, it did work well for around the perimeter, but what I found, and I wasn't sure if it was going to work, was this floor sander, and I rented it from Home Depot. Um, here, Blake, let's flip it down so you can see the underside of it. Let go of it for a second. Let go. Hey, I feel like Let go. Gonna... Let go. There you go. Is that okay? That's fine. I already started using it, so it's real messy. Um, but essentially, if I wipe this off up here, these are diamond blade uh, or diamond tip blades that are underneath here and it scrapes it off. It's actually meant for taking off glue, mastic, that type of stuff. Um, but they said that it would work on paint. Um, the person, the rental person at Home Depot said it didn't get good uh, reviews or people that had come in uh, that tried to strip off paint off of concrete floors um, said it didn't work so well, but it does. It just takes a while. So you just got to take your time. Now, if you watch one of the videos on Home Depot's website about this, they say to run it dry. These guys said to run it wet. So literally I just have a bucket of water with a rag and I've just been dipping the rag and kind of like shaking it on the floor and that seems to work the best. And if you notice, there's this black ring around it. This just Velcros on. You can get this with the rental at Home Depot. It doesn't cost anything else. Um, and what it does is it actually keeps uh, the stuff from splattering out. So if you were using it dry, you could put this on and it'll contain most of the dust and there's a, an attachment here for a shop vac. Or right now, like I said, you could just keep this on here and it literally doesn't spray anything out. Um, you can see I put plastic all around the, the perimeter of the room. That wasn't even really necessary. This thing doesn't splash at all. It's just making little swirl marks all over the floor and then, uh, and then from there I'm cleaning it up. So, it's working really well. Uh, as you can see, I've done this whole section that took me about two hours though so far. So this is going to take me a good portion of the day. Um, what I think Blake was just going to say is the squeegee. <laughs> he wanted to talk about the squeegee. So I have a squeegee. So what I'm doing is after I do a small section before it really dries, I'm squeegeeing it into a pile and then I am scooping that into a bucket. So you can see like here's all the sludge. So that's a mix of paint and concrete uh, and, in the water. And like moisture. Yeah, and the moisture from the water. Um, so I'm just doing a little section at a time, squeegeeing it in, and then, uh, and then cleaning it up. And then we're gonna go to the next section. So that's it. We just thought this would be a good video, even though the kids aren't doing it, because I'm sure other people have concrete floors that have been painted, that they wanna get the paint removed from it, and this thing works really well. This was, uh, I think about 160 bucks to rent it for the whole day. You could rent it for a couple of hours, but um, something like this would take more than a couple of hours. So there you go. For the whole day, it was, like I said, about 160 bucks, and uh, that's it. That's the rental for the sander, the rental for the blade, and insurance and whatever else came with it. The protection plan. You could if you really needed to, but I think this is going to go a lot faster once we get to this section over here that doesn't have much paint. Uh, oh, the other thing is you'll see there are some cracks in the floor. It does smooth those out a little bit. So down here, I've just been running it back and forth and you don't feel the lump anymore. Where here I could feel a lump. So it does take out um, small imperfections in the floor. It's not really meant to do, yeah, smooth, isn't it? 
It's not really meant to do anything real big, but it does take, take those out um, and it works pretty well on that. So we're gonna keep going through this and then we'll show you a video, or actually we'll add it to the end of this video, of what the floor likes once it is, um, once the paint is all removed and we get it cleaned up. We're probably gonna have to mop it and then wet it down and suck it up with a shop vac to get it really cleaned up um, because there is a, a whole lot of mess involved with this. But uh, once we get to that point, we'll do that and that'll be the next thing you see probably here in the video. Uh, one more thing before we get to the next section where we show clean how to operate it. So it just plugs in right here. There's a cord for it. This is the release handle for the top. So it'll lower the top down to wherever you want it to feel comfortable and then you can lock it back in. And then the biggest thing is you don't actually push this thing around. You just guide it. So it's going to want to go on its own. So I would suggest doing what I did. Start sort of in the middle of the room so that if it takes off in one direction or the other, you can figure out how to control it. So what you do is, nope, not what Blake is doing. <laughs> you turn it on, grip it real tight, and I would put your hip into it. So put your hip into it. So there you go. Not, maybe not your belly. You could do it with your belly, I guess, depending on how tall you are. I put my hip into it and just kind of brace it so that when it starts, it doesn't kick too much either direction because if it catches and kicks, it will take off. And if you're too close to a wall, it's going to put a hole in your wall. Um, but literally all you have to do here, watch Blake, let me see it. When you're running it, it's kind of tilted back and forth like this, like forward or backward. And then it's going to want to make it kind of go side to side. So kind of hold on loosely. You have to push this little button in first. You push that in and then you squeeze these handles and then it's going to start. And then you just guide it kind of side to side. And you could go back and forth with it. You can move it all around, but again, it wants to naturally go one side or the other. So if you just kind of angle the, the handle around a little bit, um, you'll get it to go side to side. Bye. And then it's, it is going to tire your arms out. So if you keep your hip on it, you could maybe, you could kind of like push it back and forth like this and go front to back and give your arms a little bit of a but break. if it's off, you go like this. Kind of yeah, if it's off, you just tilt it down and wheel it around like that. So that's how you use it. Actually, maybe I'll have Blake record a little bit here as I'm doing the next section. Okay, so you can see that's how we did a section. Blake is gonna squeegee this, so we're, you can see like all the sludge that it creates. Go real slow with it so you don't splash yourself. Make a pile, you wanna make a pile. So we're gonna squeegee it all into a pile, and then we're gonna scoop it off, and then that'll show us what other sections that we still need to go over again. So we'll get it in a pile, we'll get this out, we'll throw some more water down, and we're gonna keep on going. Okay, so you can see we finished, or I finished sanding this floor. Um, it did take quite a while. So this is about thousand square feet down here and it took me about six and a half hours to do it. Um, that was just the initial sanding. And as you saw, like the majority of the paint was over in this area. The section was behind me hardly had anything on it. Um, this area did take quite a while. And if you could see, let's see if I can get up close. You can see these fine cracks that were in the floor are mostly ground down. It's a lot smoother. There used to be like little teeny lumps and now it's it's smooth. You can see some of the aggregate. Um, let's see if I can zoom in. You can see some of the aggregate that's exposed now. So it did uh, it did do a really really nice job. It just takes a long time. Definitely want to keep uh, watering it as you're going. The other thing as you're using that machine 
squeegee behind you. So I'd get a squeegee and as I would do a small area, I would squeegee that off and, uh, and put it in the bucket like I was talking about. Um, the next day after I did the whole thing and I ended up mopping down here, I literally had to use a scrub brush, like a, uh, a scrub brush that would mount to the end of a, um, like a broom handle because there was still a lot of, of like sludge that had dried up and stuck to the floor. So when you're squeegeeing it, I would squeegee it as best you can. You almost, it'd probably be better off if you had some water, could spray it down and then squeegee as much off as you can. And then that way the next day you might be able to just mop it uh, to get the rest of the heavier stuff off. And then you're gonna have to do another cleaning after that. So I did actually three cleanings down here just to get it um, to look, whoop, just to get it to look uh, the way that it is here. Um, so you can kind of run your hand across it and not get any any uh, debris or dust up from it. Um, I actually thought after the fact I probably should have rented one of those machines from like Home Depot or any of the stores um, that was like a um, like a steam vac almost and gone over the whole thing and that would have helped loosen it up and uh, and suck it up. But uh, that's hindsight's twenty twenty. So anyway, thing worked really well. If you guys are looking, anyone's looking to. Uh, Get ready, get a concrete floor, especially in your basement, ready for stain. I would highly recommend that, uh, that rental machine from Home Depot. Uh, it took the paint off. It looks like it would take mastic off. Um, or even if you didn't need any of that, it did a real nice job um, scuffing the surface and opening up the pores. Before, water would almost beat up on the floor, and now it absorbs right in, which is really good because I'm starting to stain over there. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. But um, the other thing to note, you can see it here. You will get little swirls if you go too fast. There were a couple of areas where there was no paint. So I just figured I would kind of go over it quickly just to scuff it up. But again, there was so much sludge on the floor that I couldn't tell that it looked like this until after I cleaned it a couple of times. So I would say take your time so you don't end up with these little swirl marks. Now the one thing with the stain is it's going to cover most of this. I already tested it behind the bar. Um, so you just hit these areas with a little bit darker stain. Um, and it'll cover it up. But just note, take your time with it. Maybe squirt it off as you're squeegeeing it. You'll see this type of stuff and you'll be able to, uh, to prevent those mistakes. As far as the stain, I'm doing a water-based stain. Uh, this artesian stain. We have a couple different colors down here um, that we're testing out. It looks like we're gonna go with a uh, bronze, an aged walnut, and an autumn color and do kind of a little bit of a random mix and it gives us this interesting look. It's still wet right now because I was just spraying a few spots here but um, I think it's going to look pretty interesting. And then you put a sealer over top of it. Now watch because when you put the sealer over top it will darken it up um, but it makes it look really cool. It gives it more of like this kind of industrial look. Um, and for us we have moisture that was slowly coming up through the concrete. Not to the point where it's wet but um, if you left something with a rubber backing or a plastic backing on it, you could see a mark underneath of it. So we couldn't put like a laminate floor or, um, or anything like that down. So they recommended we go with this water-based stain and then just seal it. So we're going to do that and then some area rugs. So if you have any questions about the staining process, um, let me know because I've learned a lot in the last couple days. Also, if you're doing it, get one of these little pumpers, these little hand pumpers. Um, because the nozzle is adjustable and you can get a real fine spray uh, pattern out of it, which works really well. I've tried a couple, I actually three different bigger pump sprayers that I had and it just puts out way too much stain and then you end up with a lot of dark spots that look like little ponds all over the floor. So uh, definitely get one of those little hand pumpers that works really, really well. And it's a lot easier to use. So that's it. If you guys have any questions about the... Um, the machine that we used and anything else related to the floor or anything else related to the stain, let us know. Actually, what I'll do is instead of ending it right here, I'll clip in here in a second what the floor looks like when I'm done and then we'll wrap the video up. Okay, here is the final floor after it was stained. So that's what it looks like. One thing I found out, well, I may have said this already. Um, if it's an old concrete floor, this floor is about 60 years old. Um, the stain does not go on real smooth. It does go on smooth, but when it dries, like the very last moment as the last bit of moisture is drying out, um, it tends to, uh, the, the pigment in the dye tends to separate and it goes into all the little micro fractures that are in the concrete. So you end up with like this type of effect if you see it. Now it doesn't look that bad. 
across the room, but it was really annoying me because I wanted it to be more smooth and even out. Um, and it definitely did not turn out that way. I think it still looks nice. It's just a different look than, uh, than what I was going for. But just keep that in mind. If it's new concrete, it seems to, like it would absorb it more evenly uh, and dry evenly, and the old concrete does not tend to do that. Now, you could rub it out. Um, so if you spray it, I sprayed all this. We did like three, I did three different colors um, and swirled it and kind of did different patterns. Um, but if you spray it and then go over it with a rag, uh, it will even out. It just depends on the look that you, uh, you want to accomplish. Like you can see, I was doing some test spots sort of over here along the bar. Let me try to get one without some reflection. And this kind of, this area over in here is a little bit more smoothed out. So, um, and that's kind of what this area over here is like too. But I didn't feel like doing that to the whole floor because then you end up with some of these puddled areas here too. So it puddled, it got real dark and then I was dabbing the puddles and I ended up with a light spot and it just, it wasn't working out either way. So I ended up just spraying it and massaging out some of the real heavy spots and then uh, doing the uh, seal coat over top, which the seal coat does darken it up a bit. Uh, I went with a semi-gloss here. So that kind of gives you that middle of the road sheen um, and it makes it easy to clean too. Um, so that's it, that's what it looks like after the stain. So if you guys have any questions about uh, stripping up the concrete, the paint, or anything like that, that machine from Home Depot, or anything related to the stain, feel free to comment below. Be happy to respond. Thanks for watching.